Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. I'm Bumi and today we are watching Consumed by the Apocalypse from the channel Let Me Know. Yeah, lately I've been um, watching a lot of disaster videos. Um, not, not really disaster, but uh, the different ways on how, um, well, Earth can end. And uh, this got recommended to me on my um, feed, so... I watched the first few seconds of it and I already like uh, the production quality as well as his voice and delivery so I decided to go ahead and uh, check this out uh, I'm excited to see what he gives out um, we're probably gonna get a lot of uh, a lot of the common ones like uh, asteroid impact uh, nuclear war uh, probably some uh, gamma ray bursts here and there, but uh, I'm interested. I'm interested to see if he's gonna mention uh, something new that I haven't seen or ha haven't thought of. So, um, yeah. Remember, if you like my reactions, don't forget to leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and the reaction down in the comment section below, and consider subscribing. Also, uh, suggest to me what other YouTube videos you'd like me to watch and react to um preferably um some mystery stuff uh science stuff funny <laughs> some funny videos and let's see what else what else what else like i guess that's it or any other video you'd like me to watch really just um <laughs> oh just let me know i guess <laughs> that being said let's go ahead and watch the video just let me know Of all the species that have ever lived, yeah, all I'm only up to here, <laughs> and then I decided to stop watching and do a reaction of it instead. In the future, the same fate will befall humanity. It may take centuries, it might take eons, but extinction is unavoidable. Mm -hmm. That's true. The future is fraught with uncertainty, and the if not, never if not the heat death of the universe, then. I don't know what else, but the human species is gonna get extinct at some point. Oh, oh, we're gonna go asteroids first, I guess. Cosmic threats, here we go. Kinetic bombardment. Years ago, an approximately one kilometer wide asteroid collided with Earth. The crater has yet to be located, but fragments is this the one that uh, wiped out the dinosaurs? The no, that was that was bigger. Field that um, up to 30 of the planet's surface. I, I think I think it was uh, what was it? Chicxulub, the one that killed off the dinosaur. It was around 15 kilometers, I think. Our distant ancestors were not only alive to witness this event, but managed Survived to it. and survive. Mm -hmm. Impacts of this magnitude occur roughly once every half a million to two million years. And <laughs> that's just one kilometer. More devastating impacts, like the one that nearly wiped out the dinosaurs, are far less frequent. Yeah, Chicxulub. Around Possibly 10 kilometers plus. Okay. 100 million years. Bigger than Mount Everest. Yep. Whether a collision of this magnitude is survivable is a matter of debate. Hmm. There's probably if uh, if we have enough uh, warnings, uh, enough of a warning, a small handful is probably gonna survive. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, well, the world leaders are gonna survive. Uh, they probably have their own bunkers, or they're gonna come together and. Um, use use someone else's bunker. Most likely, it's gonna be somewhere in um, Russia or the U.S. Uh, let's see, U.K. will probably have their own. Um, China, I don't know, but they probably have as well. Like all all the major superpowers will have their bunkers. So 
they are going to be, uh, they are going to survive and a handful of um, uh, military, but your average, <laughs> your average civilian, nah, I don't know if they're even going to let them in. They're probably just going to let them in just to have someone to order around, I guess. But man, the, the editing is so far amazing on this video. The kinetic energy released upon impact would be equivalent to the simultaneous detonation of billions of atomic bombs. Ooh, not even Those all. The initial blast would billions be of it. unrelenting earthquakes, firestorms, and tsunamis. Mm -hmm. Winter. A layer of smoke and dust would quickly envelop the globe and yep. blot out the sun. An impact winter. Impact winter. Would last for yep. months or even years. Same thing would happen with um, Darkness, nuclear strikes. And cold and global famine would throw the world into a chaos. nuclear winter. In spite of this, long-term survival is not inconceivable. Small yeah, so, of humanity yep, may I thought refuge so. Refuge underground, and would at least be given a chance to rebuild civilization. Some of us will survive. I will but not. Make no mistake. For sure, <laughs> it would be a close call. <laughs> I don't have any we anywhere near the qualifications. If so they're gonna the do it based on, on how much uh, qualifications. Near the Earth objects. percent of nearby asteroids and comets larger than one kilometer have already been detected. If one of them were on a collision course with Earth, we'd know for decades or even centuries in advance. Yeah, and in cases like those, we probably have um, enough time to either deflect it or have a contingency plan to, um, what do you call this? To preserve as much of humanity as possible but then again um i believe the the most recent um asteroid the one that looks like a cigar i believe we only had uh was it a couple of days or a couple of weeks before we detected it because um, it was uh, it was going fast and i think if i'm not mistaken here please correct me if i'm wrong um it was coming from the direction of the sun so uh, it made it harder to detect against the brightness of the sun. I don't know. But it was uh, an interstellar object, I think. But this was not always the case. In 1983, a 9-kilometer wide comet Ooh. was only spotted two weeks prior to its Two weeks? Holy that's shit, that's... Two weeks of preparation had it been aiming for Earth. Damn, and and at 1983, have significantly improved since 1983. I don't know. Space is impossibly vast. Yes, that is correct. In 2019, an asteroid capable of leveling a city was detected a day before it a five day? times closer to the Earth than the Moon. Holy shit! A day. Why have I not heard? Well, it's it's a fairly small, uh, 60 to uh, 130 meters. But yeah, as he said, that's enough to level a whole city, at least a couple million dead for sure. But probably, well, it depends on how densely populated the city is. Um, if it's somewhere like New York, yeah, I can see a couple million dead. But man, a day. The odds of an extinction level collision are remote. It's not impossible. That There's is a class crazy. Of known as damocloids. Damocloids are typified by their highly eccentric orbits and low reflectivity. Meaning yeah. they periodically pay us a visit and are extremely difficult to detect. Mm -hmm. We're currently tracking those are the real hundred, problems. But there could be hundreds more tumbling through the solar system. Yeah. Damocloids are, on average, 16 kilometers wide. 16 if one kilometers. Of them on a collision course with Earth. Damn, that's even. Warning. <laughs> that's even bigger than the, uh, the one that killed the dinosaurs. Holy shit. Yeah, this, this is not gonna help. Um, this is not gonna help my, uh, what I call this, existential crisis. 
<laughs> oh, this is gonna make me paranoid, but yeah. Death is a normal process, so I guess if 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 you're gonna go out, it better it better be from uh, a cosmic threat like an asteroid impact. At least it will be fairly quick and hopefully painless. Solar explosions, I believe we're gonna talk about gamma ray bursts. They explode. Ooh, I like that effect. Yep. There we go. Radio waves, radiation, and we're there. When supernova within 30 light years of Earth, it would be cause for concern. Oh, I like that effect. Fortunately, more than 90% of the stars within this bubble have already been discovered, none of which are at risk of exploding anytime soon. Okay, <laughs> that's Some reassuring. Can still pose a threat from thousands of light years away. Man, the sound design in his video is so good. It's a gamma ray burst. Now yeah, here we go. by only the most violent explosions in the universe. Instead of a spherical blast, a gamma ray burst will channel the explosion into two highly concentrated beams. More energy is released in a few seconds than the sun will radiate in its entire lifetime. Damn, that's a lot of energy. <laughs> but, but, um, that's another good way to die. It will be instant, painless, you'll never see it coming, you won't know you're dead, it's just gonna be one day you're walking your dog in the park and then fade to black. No, there won't even be a fade. It just cut the black. <laughs> the biological effects of a nearby supernova or gamma ray burst are poorly understood. We do know that the atmosphere would absorb much of the high energy radiation. But it's going to break the, uh, the ozone layer. Of its protective layer of ozone. Mm -hmm. If so, harmful levels of ultraviolet radiation from the sun would penetrate down to the surface. Yep, it will crest Certain alive. chemical reactions may also darken the sky and induce global cooling, a cosmic winter of Cosmic course. winter. This could last for years and would be lethal to many plants and animals. In fact, a gamma ray burst might be responsible for a mass extinction that killed roughly 70% mm -hmm. of all marine species nearly half a billion years ago. Damn. Now, humanity could really? easily protect itself against ultraviolet sun rays, but living through a mass extinction would not be a pleasant experience. Nope, that will not. While some authors have painted a far bleaker image, with one hemisphere effectively staring. Wait, let me see. Um, the cosmic ray beam from a supernova can kill in a relatively short time within months the majority of the species alive on the planet. That is true, and it's gonna um, compound and have this uh, domino effect on the ecosystem, which will ultimately lead to us dying. That's a problem. It's gonna be a slow death for us. The arrival of the initial pulse um, would cause all organic material on the surface of Earth to burn. Mm. The almost immediate follow, uh, in, almost immediately following cosmic rays would produce disruptive daughter particles called muons. This would affect all life. They contact with lethal dose of radiation. With this background, a loss of almost all um, biota is expected, say 99%. Ooh, I don't know what biota is, but that. That Caroline doesn't sound good. Radiation. These findings have been contested in recent years. The latest research identify ozone depletion as the primary threat. Uh, we find that the biological radiation dose from secondary muons is negligible. Uh, the main mechanism of biological damage from gamma ray bursts uh, is through solar UVB irradiation from the loss of ozone in the upper atmosphere. There's little doubt that the astrophysical and ionization ionizing radiation events have the potential to cause significant impact to earth's biosphere for a range of energy uh, flow and values the main impact is increased solar uv at the surface allowing uh 
uh, following stratosphere ozone stratospheric ozone depletion so yeah they're basically saying that um the gamma ray burst itself is not uh is not all that dangerous to us directly but it will be dangerous for the ozone layer and um the problem is that uh once the ozone layer is gone we are free pickings for the sun's uh, uv rays so we're gonna cook and die Either way, nevertheless, a gamma ray burst sniping the Earth from across the galaxy is, is very improbable. Yep, improbable. All of them have so far been extra galactic in origin, much too distant to pose a threat. Because, um, if you think about it, I'm sorry if I'm pausing a lot. Um, if, if you think about it, space is super, I mean, incredibly large, right? And the tiniest. The tiniest amount of like let's say uh point zero 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 one percent difference in angle can mean like probably a couple of light years away um well a couple of light years away it will be also maybe a couple of light years away from um from your target say for example um Say for example, this knife, right? And this is the gamma ray bursts. Like it's it's like trying to a slight difference in angle can lead you so far away, and it might not even hit us if that makes any sense. While there are a few potential candidates within the Milky Way, none of them appear to be directed at Earth. Apart from impact events and stellar explosions, the foreseeable future is free of cosmic threats. Other eventualities are know. either too improbable or won't happen for millions of years. Wait, what do we have here? Close encounter with another star. Oh wait, the star Gliese, Gliese 710 will blaze the outer solar system. Uh, it may perturb the Oort cloud and fling comets towards Earth. Yep. Uh, evolution of the sun, yes, that's uh, inevitable. Uh, the sun will grow into a red giant, and um, we're probably already uh, moved out of Earth before that happens, because long before the sun reaches um, Earth, it will cook us alive before that. Uh, collision with the rogue planet or black hole, yeah, that's true. Same thing with uh, Gamma Reverse. Uh, virtually possible extra <laughs> extraterrestrial invasion science fiction until it isn't that's that's true isn't it it's like things are impossible before it is possible right so we'll never know that that this one still in questions question marks all around uh end of the universe yeah that's not gonna happen anytime soon ample time for us to prepare other calamities permitting okay what do we what do we have next is that a volcano yep super volcanoes terrestrial threats mm -hmm. gonna induce a volcanic winter and 74,000 years ago a large volcano erupted in Southeast Asia. It is the most powerful volcanic eruption in human history. Really? For up to two weeks, it spewed enormous quantities of ash and dust into the atmosphere, enough to block out the sun and potentially cool the planet. A volcanic winter. Yep. <laughs> but there's winter. great uncertainty about the effects of the eruption on both the climate and humanity. It ranges from severe to mild, with the latest research supporting the latter. Mm. In either case, this is good news. It means that supervolcanic eruptions pose little to no threat to human existence. But it will cause a lot of damage, though. If humans stood a chance, then so should we. Yeah. But there is something even more destructive than supervolcanic eruptions. It's known as a flood basalt event. Oh, what's this? The largest I don't know about one this. occurred 250 million years ago, 
an enormous outpouring of molten rock covered a region of Siberia the size of Europe. That and big? And it just so happens to coincide with the deadliest mass extinction in history. Oh, damn. Houses, flood basalt events are both rare and slow. Instead of a singular event, it's a series of eruptions taking place over thousands or even millions of years. As such, so it's just going to keep tomorrow, pouring lava it out? might just be slow enough for us to adapt and survive. Yeah, that's true. We, we might have enough time to adapt and survive that one, but still. Damn. Natural pandemics, yep. Very For topical. Centuries, pandemics have exacted a heavy toll on humankind. Among the worst was the Black Death. Black in Death in decade, Europe? It killed between 25 and 60 percent of the European population. Ooh, the total and death that's count less than a decade. Unknown, at least tens of millions. Damn. The Colombian exchange of diseases and the Spanish flu. Spanish the flu as well. Many millions more. The tragedy of these pandemics and epidemics notwithstanding, they never came close to extinction. None of them killed more than a few percent of the global population. Yeah. For instance, um, the Spanish flu. Well, when, it, when it comes to viruses like this, uh, I presume that, well, in, in the future, we're probably, um, we will probably have perfected uh, CRISPR by then and um any any outbreaks of larger uh like larger diseases and pandemics will can probably be um halted fairly quickly if we act uh, quick and detect it early before everybody gets infected so this one i can't see this one um taking everyone out infected nearly one third of humanity yet the vast mm -hmm. majority mm -hmm. of cases did not result doesn't in have death. high death rates. A pathogen that not only infects but also kills every single member of a species is difficult to imagine. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are very few examples of infectious disease driving a species to extinction. With that being said, it's not inconceivable. For instance, pathogens that can pass between multiple species can be far deadlier than those limited yeah. to just one. That's true. The H5N1 avian influenza because it can travel faster. Flu is one such virus. So far, it's transmissible between humans and birds, but it can't sustainably spread among humans. However, laboratory experiments have shown that it may eventually acquire this ability through natural mutations. Oh. If so, it could easily become the worst pandemic in human history. That's going to be a problem. But even this horrifying proposition does not come close to extinction. In a yeah. worst case scenario, most of humanity would still survive. Let's just hope, um, in cases like this, let's just hope that um, the doctors, researchers, uh, researchers and nurses that uh, work in the medical field have the least death rate so that they can figure out a way to deal with this issue. If not, well, as we see in um, our most recent pandemic, COVID-19, are, are not, not a lot of governments know how to handle stuff like this, crisis like these. So, yeah, uh, it's not going to wipe out everyone, but uh, I'm not going to, how do you call this? I'm not gonna assume that we're gonna live through this unscathed, even if we have the technology to uh, counter it. Pandemics are complicated. It's a topic that's more relevant now than ever before. Mm -hmm and cannot possibly be done justice in a few short minutes. But in the narrow context of human extinction, it seems unlikely for nature to stumble upon that perfect storm. Biological, lab-made viruses. From volcanic eruptions and natural pandemics, the Earth has no inherent means of eradicating the human race. Mm -hmm. 
no other form of natural calamity is powerful enough to threaten our existence. Yep. There's and just so too many of us. The <laughs> immediate threat to humanity is, is humanity. Been humanity and itself. Used to be humanity. Mm -hmm. Right. Anthropogenic and natural pandemics. Yep. Bioengineered viruses. Pandemic, it may not have to. Biotechnology has now advanced to a point where we can engineer pathogens in a laboratory. While this can greatly benefit our understanding and treatment of infectious diseases, it's not without risk. Accidental breaches of containment have happened on multiple occasions. And these experiments are not always conducted in the name of science. Mm -hmm. These engineered microbes are concerning because their destructive potential far exceeds that of their natural counterparts. They can be deadlier, more transmissible, and less treatable. And the yep. rapid pace of technological progress is constantly lowering the threshold for bioengineering. The biggest concern was, he said it in so many words, that a small group of dedicated scientists could create an altered biological agent that could wipe out humanity as we know it. Technically speaking, you can do almost anything with a microbe. The real question is, will you end up with a microbe that functionally will do the things that the concerned person at your hearing said, namely, essentially wipe out everyone from the face of the earth? Uh, again, that's conceivable, although it's inconceivable, but it is, in fact, anything is possible. It would be very, very difficult to do that, extraordinarily difficult, even in the best of hands, to not only do the engineering to get a microbe that has the characteristics, but be able to spread in a way in which it has virulence, transmissibility, and the ability to go in a sustained, transmissible way. Not impossible, but very, very difficult to do. Yeah, this uh, he has a point there. It is not impossible, but very difficult to do. But then again, this was in 2005. Uh, the CRISPR program has advanced a lot over the years, so uh, I don't know. I don't know about the future. Here we go. Everyone's favorite um, apocalypse event. <laughs> Nuclear. Castle Bravo. I've heard of this before. A nuclear holocaust is among the most infamous doomsday scenarios. Mm -hmm. Since the end of World War II, we have on numerous occasions been driven to the brink of nuclear conflict, sometimes by accident, sometimes by very intentional brinkmanship. The nuclear stockpile currently stands at more than 13,000 warheads, 13, the vast majority 000. of which are owned by Russia and the United States. Oh, damn, wait. In the event Russia has more? That's interesting. I didn't know that. I thought the U.S. had a lot more. Of an all-out nuclear war. And India. Thousands of bombs could instantly vaporize Damn. hundreds of millions. Yep. But the explosions are only the mutually beginning. assured the destruction. The danger of a nuclear conflict is the aftermath. Much like an impact event or nuclear winter eruption, a thick layer of smoke and dust would quickly envelop the globe. Except uh, the difference here is that um, the nuclear winter will not just uh, block out the sun. It has um, radioactive particles that rain down from the heavens and give you cancer and probably kill you within the next few months. <laughs> A nuclear winter that not only blots out the sun, but showers the world yep, with radioactive here we go. fallout. Radioactive fallout. Fire storms, radiation poisoning, and mass starvation could easily claim the lives of billions. Mm-hmm. If we don't die from the However, explosions, <laughs> that's going to kill us. Because humanity is evenly distributed across the planet, some regions would be less affected than others. Island nations like New Zealand, for instance, 
are all but certain to survive. Unless if they get targeted. While the effects of a nuclear holocaust are almost too dismal to contemplate, it is not typically regarded as an existential threat. Really now? It's not? That's interesting. Artificial intelligence has had a profound impact on modern AI. society. From self-driving cars and virtual assistants to social media algorithms and facial recognition. But some experts are concerned about the future. A future in which intelligent machines become more intelligent than humans. The concern is not so much about evil robots as it is about misalignment. A misaligned intelligence is one that's not properly aligned with human goals and values. A system that becomes dangerous not due to any malicious intent, but due to an oversight in its programming. Mm -hmm. An unforeseen loophole that allows it to do things it was never intended to do. Yeah, that's if such gonna, an entity was sufficiently that's, intelligent. That's going to need a lot simple. of debugging for sure. Another before concern anything is like that gets intelligence released. explosion. It's a machine that can upgrade itself and thereby increase its own intelligence at an exponential rate. Mm -hmm. Moments after creating such a system, Just like, um, it could far surpass the combined intelligence of all humans that have ever lived. Uh, just like the AI that... Um, what game was it? The checkers looking game. Uh, Go? Uh, I forgot who made it. Was it Google? Uh, they made the AI that plays Go. It taught itself how to play and now it even knows moves that uh, can be replicated, replicated by humans, I think. Such and the one that played Dota. To no regard for yeah. Human affairs. Not unlike humanity's disregard for species less intelligent than us. Mm -hmm. That's true. With that being said, these concerns are far from universal. In 2016, a survey of more than 300 machine learning experts was conducted. It's average, 2045. It gave a 50% chance of an artificial intelligence surpassing plus. all human abilities by 2061. 2061, but as okay. you can see from these faded lines in the background, there's tremendous variation between individual respondents. Some think it will happen in a few years. Others believe we're more than a century away. When asked about the impact of this technology, the majority of respondents believed in a positive outcome. Extinction was only given a medium probability of 5%. Wow, 5%. Artificial intelligence is not the only emerging technology with the potential for human extinction. But the problem with assessing the risk is that we have no precedence. We can estimate the likelihood of an asteroid impact by surveying the geologic record and our cosmic neighborhood. But there's no historical context for artificial intelligence or self-replicating nanomachines. That is true. When the first nuclear device was detonated in 1945, there was a genuine concern that it would ignite the atmosphere and incinerate all life on the planet. Mm -hmm. I've heard about that. In fact, one of the observers was so taken aback by the enormity of the explosion that for a brief moment, that's precisely what he thought had happened. While this doomsday scenario did not come to pass, it's a cautionary tale. No one really knows what the future will bring. All we can do is proceed with caution and hope for the best. Oh, that looks cool. Environmental In the past decline. few decades, species across the plant and animal kingdoms have been disappearing at an alarming pace. <clears throat> Some 10 billion trees are cleared every single year, while animal populations are rapidly declining. Oof. Many yeah. species are also going extinct. The global rate of extinction is now tens or even hundreds of times greater than before humans conquered the planet. And it's accelerating. Upwards of one million species are now threatened with extinction. 
that's a lot of species. At the core of this immense loss of biodiversity is overconsumption driven by overpopulation. Humanity is now depleting three quarters as many resources as the Earth can naturally replenish, meaning we will soon need a second Earth just to break even. Mars, here we come. <laughs> From deforestation and defaunation to pollution and climate change, no shocking graph nor depressing slideshow can fully convey the totality of our destruction. That's true. Our relationship with nature is so utterly broken that many fear right. we are now heading for extinction. Let me see how likely you think uh, think it is that. Right, how likely do you do you think it is that climate change will cause the extinction of the human race uh, in Europe? Um, a lot of people say I don't know. Ten percent says very likely, quite likely, not likely at all. Yep. I would expect a lot of not very likely and not likely answers from uh, Europe and the US, to be honest, because there's a lot of um, uh, non-believers in climate change there. I, for one, believe in climate change. Yeah, you see, Asia and Pacific <laughs> have a lot of very likely because, to be honest, um, we are the ones we are we are the ones that's probably been affected by by most that's why we believe it a lot uh the u.s and north africa um i don't know how it is going there but middle east probably this it's been the same um uh deserty region there for so long so that's probably why uh they have a lot of um not likelies there but yeah this, this is a... unraveling of nature this is really telling. While some of the most comprehensive assessments to date do indeed paint a truly dystopian image of the future, none of them forecast total annihilation of the human race. We may turn the planet into a living hell, but <laughs> a livable hell. This is fine. <laughs> That's a good quote right there. However, We're going to turn this into a living, uh, living hell, but a livable one. That's a good one. Scientists line. argue that these assessments are severely underestimating the gravity of this crisis. That the sheer magnitude of our destruction is difficult to grasp for even well-informed experts. Some have also voiced their concerns about potential tipping points, a threshold that once exceeded may trigger no an irreversible back. decline of ecosystems around the world. Mm -hmm. A global ecological collapse from which recovery becomes virtually impossible. But it's not all doom and gloom. While the rate of deforestation is alarmingly high, it has been slowing down over the past three decades. While the transition has been infuriatingly slow, more and more countries are phasing out fossil fuels in favor of renewable energy sources. So in no mm -hmm. way should human extinction, which is the most extreme outcome, be regarded as inevitable. Climate change mitigation and nature conservation efforts are all but certain to prevent that from happening. But at the same time, that's how low we've set the bar. Yeah, that is true. Is that the great, um, I think it was called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, or is that just a landfill? No, I think that's just a landfill. Yeah. What surprised me while making this video is just how difficult it is to truly wipe out everyone. Many catastrophes can drive us to the brink of extinction, but mm -hmm. all of them struggle to cross the finish line. So that should be somewhat reassuring. Even if humanity was reduced to a few hundred individuals, a full recovery might still be possible. It would undoubtedly might. take many thousands of years, but might recovery still be possible. would not be out of the question. And the more we expand beyond the confines of Earth, extinction from any singular catastrophe becomes increasingly unlikely. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the apocalypse won't be dealt by a swift, decisive blow, but instead a gradual, yeah. altering decay. Slow. One Slow disaster death. bleeding into the next, until the final embers of humankind silently fade away. Regardless, 
it won't happen anytime soon. After all, we made it this far. Millions of years of evolution, countless disasters, and humanity still standing. That is perhaps the best reassurance that the world is still gonna be there tomorrow. Yep, this is a really great video. Very informative, um, well researched. You can see uh, they have uh, the links down in the original video's description uh, for their um, credits, uh, sources, and references. Uh, you could go ahead and check that out. I'll leave um, a link of the original video down in uh, my description. So go ahead and check this video out for yourself. Go subscribe to let me know. Um, this, this was a really good video. And um, yeah, it it didn't help my anxiety, to be honest. But it was it was a bit reassuring that um, there are a lot of ways that we could end um, this. This could probably be called uh, pseudo great great filters, but it doesn't look like there are like events that could totally wipe us out. But still. Um, for those of us who who will remain after such uh, apocalypses happen, good luck. <laughs> I'm probably, hopefully, long dead before that happens. Uh, but yeah, this was a good video, but that's going to be it for me today, guys. Link to my Twitter is down in the description below. Go ahead and check it out if you want to. And um, if you're new here and enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like, let me know your thoughts on the reaction down in the comment section below, and consider subscribing. It helps me and it helps the channel grow. Also, let me know what other videos you'd like me to watch. I'll be happy to check them out for you. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!